Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition here of the Football Guys DFS Power Grid, all presented to you by Rotogrinders.com. We've got all four of us back together again. Of course, I'm Dan Bach. We got Devin Knox, Tib and Pick, and Mr. Phil Alexander. Uh, for various reasons, we've missed shows over the last few weeks, but I'm happy to be with my guys back. And uh, boy, we're setting up for just a nutty week here in not just daily fantasy football, but all fantasy football. COVID out there like crazy. We'll do our best to navigate you through it. It's Thursday night. Uh, obviously, a lot will change until uh, uh, kickoff on Sunday, but we will do our best. Uh, again, check us out, Football Guys and Roto Grinders. Thanks for checking us out on YouTube. Thumbs up and a comment would be a wonderful, wonderful thing. Let's bring in the fellas here and... Uh, Tip and pick. I'm going to start it with you. You feel, uh, you know, it's you seem like a little loose here today in the uh, in the pregame show. How are you doing, my man? I'm doing well. I'm uh, on vacation from work, uh, end of year vacation, so a little more time to prepare. And Lord knows, I needed it coming into the night. There's uh, there's a lot going on uh, in the world of COVID and injuries. Week 15, uh, it's all coming together, and uh, you know. Feeling good about uh, about vacation. We'll see how I feel about uh, DFS. It's been a, it's been an interesting day of research. Uh, Devin, we don't get to really talk about the Browns because they play on Saturday, maybe. Um, but just your thoughts on that game here, real quick, for the people who are catching this show uh, here on Friday or Saturday before the actual game. You're the Browns fan. You're kind of plugged in over there and just absolute madness, it seems. Yeah, it's crazy. So, I, I mean, realistically, this could be – it's going to get to a point where, like, maybe there ends up being value on taking some of these Browns players if you're playing on, like, a Saturday slate because so many people are just going to be off of them completely. I was joking before the show, but Nick Mullins might be their best quarterback on that roster. You know he's at least a gunslinger who's not afraid to throw it down the field. Um, so maybe there's some value there. We, we've seen him with tight ends in the past with him and George Kittle hook up for a couple times in San Francisco. So I, I'm cautiously optimistic. Everyone knows how, how much I hate Baker Mayfield. So let's let's jump into this. Okay. Okay. Uh, real quick, though. Vegas minus four right now. At this it's gonna. Keep, I'm not touching it yet because it's gonna keep going. The money's gonna keep coming in on Vegas. So, so you're you're waiting for the Browns. That's to right. Go up yeah. To go. Okay. I think it gets okay. to five and a half, five, five and a half, something like that. There should be a disclaimer here that Devin has touted Nick Mullins on this show before. I have, and it worked out. Yeah, he has. He definitely <laughs> has. So. All right, well, let's get to this week, uh, John. Uh, the you know Vegas lines are kind of all over the map, but um, take us through highest total games and you know spots we need to have on our radar here as we up our prep. Yeah, we're at that time of the year where uh, we you know college football is largely over, at least uh, regular season. Bowl games are starting, forty-four of them, as I've heard. Uh, so we have Saturday games now, and we have Saturday two Saturday games, a Monday game. And a Thursday game, so the uh, the you know even though we don't have bye weeks anymore, basically the same number of players in the player pool uh, in this week 15, which I think is the first week of season long playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no 50 point games this week, not a single one. The highest uh, Vegas total on the board on the main slate is the Seahawks going over to the uh, Los Angeles Rams Stadium. Um, outside of that, you've got Arizona going to Detroit and wait, 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 you had that backwards, right? The Seahawks can't possibly be the highest scoring team going to the Rams. I didn't say that. I said it was the highest scoring, the highest, uh, total. Well, just ignore everything. It's week 15 and I don't know what I'm talking about then. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself. All right. Um, we, we could run it back. Maybe I did say that. I don't know. I've had two glasses. We're not running it back, boy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not running it back. Um, if you want to rewind it, you can do that yourself. Yeah, please do. And then uh, give, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and then uh, Atlanta going over to uh, San Francisco. Uh, Kyle Shanahan payback game or narrative game, if you like. 
Um, there, you know, there isn't a whole lot to like on the top end this week. You've got Arizona. Kyler Murray looked uh, pretty good um, in his return last week from from injury, and he's going up against uh, Detroit. And we'll talk about this in in just a moment. Detroit's got some real issues with their secondary because of COVID, um, as does the Los Angeles Rams. So both Kyler Murray and, and Russ Wilson look good for that reason. Um, and then outside of that, you've got uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, maybe on the top end. Uh, the 49ers have a 27.8 implied team total against Atlanta. And um, the Cowboys and Bills are right there at about 27 and a half. Uh, as far as things go, it's very similar to last week. Not a whole lot of high-end teams scoring over 30 points, at least not from uh, from Vegas's perspective. That said, this is a really interesting week. Forget Vegas. With COVID, with injuries, with playoff situations, it's going to be a, a week where I think there's probably an edge to be had, but it's going to require some work, um, some some diligence. And, uh, you know, you're plugged into the right folks. Be sure to be reading articles, rotor grinders, football guys. We'll keep you updated. And the later you're looking at those things, the better. Absolutely. Uh, I think the early morning shows are going to be of vital importance and, uh, you know, Saturday night stuff as well, because once we get that Friday injury report, we'll get a little bit more clarity. But uh, some, some changes in the COVID um, protocol as well here. So, I don't think we're going to have full clarity until we probably get inactives on Sunday morning. So uh, be ready to pivot. Okay, we're going to jump in to the quarterback position. Phil, I'm going to get to you in just a minute, but we usually save GPPs for last. So I hope you're okay um, that you haven't spoke. You're good. Okay, Devin, <laughs> we're leading it off with you at the quarterback spot. Um, one position that, you know, I think, you know, depending on how the injuries shake out, you know, could be a spot where uh, – you might not be too hard to pay up for the top end guys. Yeah, but I don't know that I want to um, just because there's going to be it depend. It sort of depends on how the, the week plays out, but there's going to be some garbage players that are are coming through. And I sort of want consistency and I want guys that I know are going to have a role. And we're, we'll talk about wide receivers in a minute, but there's there's at least one, maybe two top end guys that I, I want to play. So I'm starting. I'm starting with Tua Tagovailoa against the New York Jets at 5,700. A little bit nervous about Jalen Waddle and his status, but to get a guy against the Jets at 5,700, the Jets, you know, we we know that their secondary is is, is pretty bad, and you know, Tua, he's been hot or cold this year. I know that John loves him and plays him nearly every week. But um, the, the Jets are allowing 270 yards passing per game. If I'm going up a little bit, um, John might like this one too. I don't know. But 6,500, Dak Prescott going up against the Giants. I think that he's pretty pretty safe. The Giants have been pretty good against the run. They've been horrendous against the pass. I think they're only allowing like 95 yards rushing to running backs this season, um, which is a little bit better than I thought they would be. So uh, – Dak has these games where he's going to break out, and it seems like he hasn't been there recently. I know they've had a bunch of injuries and a bunch of issues through their wide receiving core, but they need to get right here quickly um, as they head into the playoffs. Yeah, and Phil, where do you land on Kyler Murray here? You know, this is a, a game on the road against Detroit, highest implied team total of of, of 30 points but also, you know, a potential situation where it's blowout city and we don't get either fourth quarter work or it's just running down the clock. Uh, what's your thoughts on on Murray for tournaments um, against this, you know, Detroit team that's absolutely dreadful? I'm going to have a piece of Kyler Murray for sure. I mean, just from the standpoint of, you know, out of the, the corner of my eye, I'm watching Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. They're not on this slate uh, Tom Brady and Taysom Hill are not on this slate. Josh Allen is banged up. I don't know how many people are going to move in his direction uh, until we know what's going on with his sprained foot. You got Lamar Jackson with a, a sprained ankle. Um, so where do you get the, the ceiling uh, from quarterback? And, and Kyler Murray is the one guy that, that does stand out and, and can deliver that ceiling that could win you a tournament. Um, that 
being said, did anybody else notice towards the end of that game, uh, what was that, Monday night that, that they played, that he was kind of limping around a little bit towards the end? Yeah, he hasn't been running nearly as much as he was. But yeah, yeah he definitely walked off the field really slow at the end of that game. Yeah, he was looking kind of ginger. So I wonder if that uh, ankle sprain that he was dealing with, if if he's completely over that, does make you wonder. Um, but yeah, I, I like Murray just fine in tournaments. I, I think that's probably going to be the decision that, that people are faced with, right? Do you pay up to Murray or do you drop down to Tua? And uh, Tua, even though he's he's playing really well in tournaments, he's he's a pretty easy fade for me because, uh, well, where, where does Roto Grinders have him projected, Dan? Uh, he is. I'm looking at nine, about fourteen percent. They've got him as the chalk, but not mm-hmm. much, like right around Kyler. Something tells me it, it, it's going to pick up steam uh, the more people listen to shows like this, and if, if he ends up. Much higher than ten to twelve. I'm I'm probably coming in with about half the field uh, in tournaments. You know he is missing Waddle, who's his most trusted weapon. Yeah. Uh, and um, that that game total is forty one and a half. I mean, like a thirteen nothing Dolphins win would not surprise me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think two is definitely going to get a lot of momentum because he's under that under six k. It's going to allow people to. You know, if they want to play Cooper Cup this week, assuming he's still viable come Sunday, um, he's an avenue to kind of get there. John, you mentioned Russell. Well, you mentioned Seattle. You know, they get the Rams, and the Rams are, you know, 25-plus COVID. Their defense is, you know, a big part of that. And But we also saw that Tyler Lockett was uh, put on the COVID list this week. So Lockett's been Wilson's like main guy. I mean, right now I'm seeing implied total under 20. You're not seriously considering Russell Wilson this week, are you? Uh, in tournaments, I absolutely am. Are we talking about tournaments or, or cash? Uh, we can go tur- either way. Is I mean, I mean, you're not playing him in cash. I think that's no, I, I think in cash games, uh, the two quarterbacks I'm looking at are, are have, have been talked about and that's, Tua and Kyler, um, you know, Kyler, they get the highest implied team total on the board. Um, he's, he's missing DeAndre Hopkins, which can be construed as negative, uh, but they've got plenty of receivers there. Um, some questions at running back that we'll talk about and Chase Edmonds might be the, the lead running back um, in, in Arizona this week. And we know that uh, he likes to catch the ball out of the backfield, and uh, obviously Kyler does his thing. So um, if you're going to spend up, and typically I'm the guy who says spend down, uh, it's Kyler. If you're spending down, it's Tua. But as far as Russ Wilson goes, his price is really low. I mean, uh, we're, we're talking about an elite quarterback. Uh, he's That's 64. not that low. That's Say not again? that low. That's not that low. 64. And he's not he's not that elite either. <laughs> yeah. Sixty four is like Dak Dak Prescott's a hundred more. Well, I mean, do you think that Dak is a better quarterback than than Russ? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's got better sure. receivers. He's got better weapons. I'll I'll give you that. I, I mean the, the, the problem is Lockett might miss DK Metcalf, Freddie Swain, they're all like very questionable this week. Well, but, I mean that that's one of the reasons I kind of like him, is that nobody's gonna be on those guys. Um, you know, we've talked about this on the show. A lot of my quarterback exposure is driven by the wide receivers that I like. And those, and, and um, there are three wide receivers for Seattle who are questionable. D. Eskridge, um, uh, uh, who, who are the other ones? Um, not Swain. 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 Metcalf. Uh, Metcalf is, he, he should play. Um, and obviously Lockett is out, but um, somebody's going to step up here. I even put it on the, in the what our back room show sheet that that um uh penny penny hart let's not talk about penny hart but penny hart is a name that that by sunday morning could be viable um john you're getting in ryan hester territory sure. let's move on <laughs> I'm, about, I'm, about, I'm about to mute you <laughs> but um uh metcalf swain and, and d eskridge are all um questionable as of thursday night um but let's not forget, and, and this is in, in the, uh, you know, in a bit of the pre-read, the Rams have seven defensive backs who are likely to miss this week. 
I mean, I don't know where they're pulling the rest of their defensive backs from, but but this could be, um, you know, a spot for Russ Wilson to return. And we know DK Metcalf. Nobody likes him right now. I think Devin talked about it last week. Um, that that you know, ever since there was this, you know, uh, well, we won't, won't talk about. It. We'll keep it PG. But ever since there was this blow up with DK Metcalf a, a month ago, he's done nothing. And without Tyler there to steal that look. Maybe it's DK Metcalf and uh, Russ Wilson, and everybody's overlooking it simply because of recency bias. John John also thought the Seahawks were the highest projected total team on to begin this show, so yeah. his notes are all jacked up. <laughs> I, think, I, think, <laughs> I can't wait um, to play it back. Uh, so I, uh, there's one cheapie I got to throw out there, and he has been so dreadful this week, but we've got the Urban – Meyer narrative. We got the Houston Texans. We've got a team total of 22. I don't know if they've scored 22 points all year long. Phil, we could play some Trevor Lawrence, can't we, my man? Yeah, you might even say that the stink of Urban Meyer's fingers are off the Jaguars. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Sorry. Now I have to edit. Great. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that's that's the uh, weekend. That, 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 that was like a double entendre, you know. I I, yeah, I could get away good. with that one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, listen. I'm I'm not one uh, for narratives much, but by all accounts, Urban Meyer was a tyrant. And if there were ever a spot for the old, you know, ding dong, the witch is dead, bounce back. Uh, I would think that it's this week uh, with this Jaguars team really inspired to show the world that it was urban Meyer, uh, and his draconian regime holding them back. Um, I actually think Daryl Bevel is a, a decent coordinator. I mean, he's no star maker, but I'll tell you what I, in his history, he's been able to unlock downfield passing games at a couple of stops. I mean, granted Russell Wilson in Seattle throws an accurate deep ball that helps, Uh, But when he first got to Detroit, I remember he really changed the offense there and had Matthew Stafford looking good as a as a deep ball passer uh, for the first time in a while. It's just to say that, like, I don't think LaVisca Chenault is going to get nothing but like four yard targets this week. So here as the resident Jags fan, let me let me run it through you. There's there's two things here to, to look at. First off. Meyer really didn't do anything like and I, and I mean that like he didn't call plays. He didn't really. I don't think he did much of game planning. I don't think he did much of anything. He, so, didn't, at, he didn't at Ohio State either. Yeah. He, yeah. He so like, like I don't know like him being gone is going to suddenly like make them better. But on the flip side, I'll say this. I've never seen a team lose their coach and Vegas gives them more respect because they were at they were a three point favorite. Now they're up to five point favorites in this game. So the line is swinging heavily towards the Jags. I think this might be the week to do it. I think this might be the week in mass multi entry to throw some, some uh, Trevor Lawrence, James O'Shaughnessy type stacks, and then get all you want. And uh, John, I know you're smiling at the thought of me touting James O'Shaughnessy. All right. We ran long on quarterbacks. We got to keep going. But if you're playing cash games, it should probably be Kyler Murray um, near the top uh, or maybe Tua if you're looking in the mid-range. Okay, running backs, we'll start with tip and pick. Uh, what we got here, uh, what are we looking for at running back this week? Yeah, I mean, before the show, we were we were kind of uh, just talking a little bit, not, not doing too much, but um, talking about how there's not a lot of value, despite everything that we talked about this evening with regards to COVID and injuries and late season and this and that. There's not a lot of value. So um, at least where DraftKings is concerned, they've done a great job of pricing players and their backups. And um, I think the one place, the one place they missed, um, you know, to, to dovetail in with Dan's um, uh, mantra here, James, uh, James Robinson. He's the guy that this week I'm more than likely going to have more of J Rob than any player um, in the, in the week 15 slate. Uh, he's he's the guy wanting cash, and as long as he's not overly rostered, we'll see about that. Um, I'm going to play him in in tournaments as well. 
Uh, as of tonight, I've got him at 27% likely to reach GPP odds, which is nearly double the next closest running back. Uh, the other running backs I'm considering for cash are Najee Harris at 7,800. I don't know if I'm going there. I think I'd rather spend up on Cooper Cup at 9K. We'll talk about wide receivers in a, in a moment. Um, still some questions. What's going to happen in San Francisco? They've obviously got a great matchup against Atlanta. Uh, but if Eli Mitchell comes back, he's going to be um, a, a popular player for cash games at 6,200. And then uh, we talked about this before the show as well. Uh, Phil, I agree with you. I think if Chase Edmonds is active this week, he could be one of the better plays, not only in cash games, but also in GPPs at 5,100 against Detroit uh, with James Conner likely not to play. Love that call. If Conner is out and Edmonds is in um, against Detroit, that's a total smash spot right yeah. there. You know, that's a – that's almost a plug and play if that scenario plays out just like that. Um, Devin, any more thoughts from you on you know, yeah, cash John, and then going to GPP a little? John must have missed the news that Daryl Henderson's on the COVID list because Sony Michelle's the top play this week going up against Didn't Seattle. He be coming off though, it's been like two weeks he's been on the COVID list. Yeah, he's, he's, still, he's, st- he's still on it, and it seems like he's not going to come off. He's been he's been on for like as of today. I think he's been on for seven days. So I. I, uh, I'll look at this. You go ahead and talk. Yeah, we, we look, look it up. But the latest that I'm seeing is that he's still likely not going to play. And if I'm wrong on that, it wouldn't be the first time that I'm wrong. So go ahead and correct me. But Sony Michelle is the top guy if Henderson is out this week. Um, without a doubt, I think he becomes mega chalk. Antonio Gibson is a guy that I'm looking at going up against Philadelphia. Um, He's a guy that just continues to get volume. I know he didn't do much last week because the Washington football team got down really early and had some early turnovers. But going up against Philly, I, I want some some volume and then start whoever is playing for Arizona, whether that's Connor or Edmonds, or if they're both out, Eno Benjamin becomes one of the top plays this week in cash. We, uh, again, Thursday night, so things change. We are currently projecting um, Henderson in um, yeah. and fairly chalky as well at like 18.5%. Again, I wouldn't put much stock in ownership proje- uh, projections here on a Thursday night, but um, at least our team thinks there's a pretty good chance he's going to play. So He was, we'll, it, we'll it was added to the COVID list on the 11th, which was effectively by the time this show goes live, it'll be six days. So um, he needs two negative tests and everywhere I've been seeing is projecting into play. And I think even um, I, I could be wrong on that. I'm not going to quote that. I thought Gene, Gene was going to say he was playing, but I think that was because so football, football guys has him as out right now. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Football so, guys versus Roto grinders. Who's going to win. We'll find out come Sunday morning. It, no, it it's, 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 we know absolutely nothing. At we this know point. absolutely nothing. So, but, you know, so, I think they're like, both real good quick, plays, but Real quick, does Dr. Gene Bramwell, is he like, does he have infectious disease doctor knowledge as well? Like, can we, can we rely on him on, on COVID timelines, John? Uh, he's, he's, this guy is brilliant. Um, so yes, yes, we can. Um, Certainly more than any of us except John. So yeah, he he knows, he knows his stuff. The problem is with COVID, like you could be out three days you could be out like a month who knows so i, I, I don't know still never forget texting john in i want to say it was like february i was like what do you think of this covid stuff you're the scientist and uh here we are many years later and it's still affecting all of our lives and certainly uh lots of fantasy football news here phil well i i had my uh different tab up so i heard you ruffle a black eyed Joe, but I didn't see which one it was. So uh, what did Devin say that you either agreed with or disagreed with, and then uh, go on some more tournament running backs for us. Sure. The, uh, the black eyed Joe ruffling was on Antonio Gibson uh, last week's busted chalk. I think we're going to get at least a slight ownership discount on him this week because of that. Uh, and I think for all the reasons Devin mentioned, he is a good play. It, it does look like J.D. McKissick is unlikely. He was uh, held out of practice on Thursday, still with a concussion. That's not a good sign. 
Uh, and in McKissick's absence, Gibson has run routes on 67 and 64 uh, percent of the team's dropbacks. I just feel like he's got a multi-touchdown game bubbling underneath the surface. Um, he's carried the ball 71 times over the last three games without finding the end zone. That just doesn't happen uh, for a guy with Antonio Gibson's skill set. Um, overall, uh, w- with running back on this slate, my my notes are not very useful because the first one says that the position is not worth discussing until 11 a.m. on Sunday. Um, and, and while that may be true, I know that it doesn't uh, do the good folks out there a whole lot of good, but, um, you know, we've talked about it. Miles Gaskin is on the COVID list, Elijah Mitchell with a concussion. We don't know what's happening in Arizona. Uh, even in Seattle, where Alex Collins went on the COVID list, uh, freeing up more work for Rashad Penny. We also don't know what's going on with Adrian Peterson, uh, you know, is he going to take that Collins role or is it going to no. be all Penny? <laughs> We're really talking about Seahawks running backs. Hey, look, Rashad Penny was, uh, he was a tournament winner last week. What, what, you know, what are you going to do? Um, Javante Williams has a knee injury. Aaron Jones has a knee injury. We don't know what's going on with Daryl Henderson. I mean, th- this position is completely in flux. Uh, you know, I, I really don't have much more to say about it than that besides what's obvious to me is Gibson is a good play and James Robinson is a good play as of Thursday. Okay. I'm going to ask, let's see, let's go to John with this one. So I'm going to ask you a question. Who is the worst rush defense in professional football? Oh, I mean, off, off the, off the top of your head. Like who do you think is the worst? One of the worst. It's you don't obvious. Want to who is it? Devin New York jets. That's New York Jets. That's, that's exactly right. Oh, and we're in a situation right. here with Miami where they really don't have a single running back on its current roster. Like it, it conceivably could be Duke Johnson week, boys and girls. It could be Duke Johnson week. Dan, you're going to get muted now. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's on the list, Dan. He's on the list. No, I, 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 I'm just no. I mean, everybody versus the Jets does well. And if there's nobody else, why can't we play Duke Johnson this week? Or whomever that person is. If it's not, maybe it's Patrick so, Laird. No, we're not going to do that gimmick again. Um, Jared Mal- Dokes. Some talk, Jared Dokes. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying it's the worst rush defense out there. So from a matchup perspective, whoever is that number one is going to the- have opportunity fourth or fifth running back on the Miami Dolphins, you're a very, very bad running back. (laughs) I've seen this guy get so many chances in Cleveland as like the number one guy. And he would always have like eight or nine carries. They never increased his workload. Duke Johnson is an absolute no for me. All right. Can we, uh, uh, it, it's it's debatable. I I don't know. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to switch the topic from Duke Johnson. Um, yeah, we by the way, have... by the way, real quick, this is what we have on uh, just real quick on Miami. This is their running backs uh, on DraftKings. This is quite the side. COVID-19 next to Gaskin, Lindsay, Ahmed, IR next to Laird and Brown, and Dokes has an out next to him. That's that's what you got. You got six running backs with red squares and then Duke Johnson. And and I mean Dan, to be fair to you, they've got the fifth highest implied team total on the on the Vegas value chart this week. So uh without Jalen Waddle, maybe, maybe Devin, maybe he's wrong. Um, I don't know. But he, okay, he, now we can he, move on. You know, he's uber cheap at four thousand. We don't have we don't have three K crappers at the running back position. That's as cheap as they get. Um, I don't hate the call. He was on the list, so I'm in support of him and GPPs as a flyer. Um the guy I want to talk about is if Lamar Jackson is inactive, can we trust Devontae Freeman at 5,500 um, after a decent week? Uh, trust is in not in cash games, in GPPs? I'm not sure if he has the, the ceiling. Um, so you got Murray he, he still, actually. Right? Yeah, but he he's been seeing like ninety percent of the touches in that backfield. Uh, yeah. he, he's pre- he's pretty much taken over. It, it popped when I first looked at the slate. I said, "Huh, that's a pretty good price on Devonte Freeman." I just don't 
see it happening once all these other situation situations shake out because they just seem better than Devontae that's, Freeman that's against the Packers. But, but over the past, so I'm going to give my reason so nobody thinks I'm crazy. Over the past month, so four weeks, Devontae Freeman, 22 touches, 17 touches, 19 and 18. And he's 5,500 against Green Bay. Green Bay has been getting throttled through the through the ground for some time now, a couple of years now. And he's had, um, this is more of a DK specific take, but he's had five or more catches in three of the past four weeks. So I don't hate it with, with uh, if, if Lamar is inactive, I think he's viable. I think if Lamar is active, maybe that changes things. Famous Anyone last on... words of a DFS player. I don't hate it. <laughs> well, on this end... week, there's nothing you love. Who do you I love don't... this week? Give me uh, one guy you love this week. Cooper Cup. Let's move on. Oh, okay, we'll talk about it. <laughs> um, real quick, any interest in the Denver running backs? I know there's two of them, which kind of sucks, but they're both just like getting ridiculous volume. It, they've kind of moved to this like, okay, we're just going to we're gonna run it. Like that's going to be what we do. We've got Gordon. We've got Javante. Um, they're both relatively cheap, but I, I'm, I'm guessing no interest there because – You've got two of them there. No practice as of Thursday for Javante. So that's a, another one of those emerging situations to watch. It's yeah. really he, He's out. Melvin Gordon's a great play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if one of them's inactive, then the other is a great play. The, the issue there is, there. I mean, the last two weeks or the last three weeks since the break, you, you had a blowout win against the Chargers where one had seven, 18 touches, the other had 17 then you had a complete uh, one of them playing who had 29 to the point that, that Phil's making 29 touches because the other one didn't play. And then last week they blew out the lions who were just at, outclassed and there the, they each had 16 or more touches. So unless that happens, you know, because this week they're playing Cincinnati in a game that um, is supposed to be fairly low scoring at 44 points. I don't know that you can get behind them. All right, let's move on to wide receiver here next. And uh, Cooper Cup's name's been mentioned a couple of times, and he is popping in terms of the Rotor Grinders um, expected uh, rostered this week at almost 30%, 27.7. I think he'll probably get up to 30, um, very likely. You know, certainly in any sort of single entry or limited entry field, he'll probably be way over that number. Um John, is he just the stone cold lock in cash games that we gotta play him? In cash, yeah. But I but I, in in GPPs, I think I'm fading if he gets if he gets much above 27, 26, 27 percent. I think that you gotta fade him this week. Um Phil's wrong. Uh he's already saying sorry by by his <laughs> by virtue of his shirt. You can see it. Um I thought about this earlier. Here's what's gonna happen, guys. We're going to get a lot of value opening up into the weekend. And that 30% that you just talked about, Dan, I think it's going to approach 40%. And no player at $9,000 should be 40%, period. And I'm likely going to be under Cooper Cup uh, in GPPs. In, in cash games, absolutely lock them in because you're going to get all the value you want elsewhere. But uh, – there's a very real possibility this guy doesn't return 30 points. And if he doesn't return 30, then he's not worth it. And um, hand it over to Phil to tell me why I'm wrong on that. Well, because he's gone over 25 and 70% of his games this season. And if he comes in between 30 and 40%, that's that's double his his roster number. I mean, look, the, the goal of the game in GPPs, it, it remains the same as in cash games. You want to outscore your opponents. Um, cup should be 10,000. I, I don't know why he's not. No, I, we'll, yeah, I'm we'll surprised. I mean, I'm surprised he's not higher too. I thought he, he should, should be higher. higher. Yeah. He should be um, higher and people would still play him. That's why he should be higher. I don't there's also, there's also no Odell Beckham this week, presumably, uh, assuming he can't make it back. Uh, like you said, the game's got the highest over under on the slate. I mean, why isn't he going to get 15 targets and do Cooper Cup things all over the Seahawks? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, even I just think the volume on DraftKings in particular just makes him a can't miss. I mean, there's 
it's like his po- floor is so high, even for tournaments on this week. Like, I don't have a problem if there's lots of ways for us to go to to play Cooper Cup even in tournaments because I think there's definitely ways to get unique this week. So and- there's, here's a key question before we yeah. move before we do anything else. At what point is Cooper Cup a bad play in terms of ownership? I, I think it, it's it's not him individually. I think it's like how much other chalk do you have? If you're playing Kyler Murray or Tua with Cooper Cup, I probably wouldn't be as interested in it. But if you're playing like Trevor Lawrence at like 2% ownership, who cares if you've got a, a 35 or 40% Cooper Cup? doesn't really matter. I think it's all about total ownership. And in this week in particular, there's not like five strong chalk that I feel like, okay, you got to play these groups of guys. If there was, I'd more agree with you. He's really the only guy that we've, we've got right now. And well, that's, that's probably going to change a little you bit. You can make a case for Devontae Adams. Like oh, yeah, he's Devontae good Adams has yeah. four touchdowns in his last three games. Like if he gets over 40, I – think you could pivot to Adams, but anything less than that, I'm taking Cooper Cup. Play them both with Lawrence. Good. Yeah. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, the case for Devontae Adams is a good one because it's on my list. Um, where do we see – where do we <laughs> – yeah, where, where do we see his uh, his roster number checking in? Probably around half of Cups, somewhere in that neighborhood? Uh, less than that, uh, about – 10% to Cups 27. Yeah, I'm about 13, so in the same ballpark. All right. So All right. Go I'm going to I'm gonna call it 15 or 16 and, and go on the high side and say that that is a, a really good pivot off of Cup because uh, everybody's going to spend the extra 100 bucks. Um, Adams hasn't reached his ceiling quite as frequently as Cup, but he is coming in hot, 233-point-plus games in his last three. And that matchup against the Ravens, is sneaky good, and I don't think the the public perceives it that way. They're going to be down three starters in the secondary, and they've allowed four 100-plus-yard receiving performances, uh, two wide receivers, since week 11. I think that um, the receiving line that Deontay Deontay Johnson dropped on them a couple weeks back, uh, it was like 11 targets, eight catches, 100 yards, two touchdowns. Um, very easy to see coming in this spot for Devonte Adams. So I think that is a, a sharp tournament play, whether you're fading cup or like Dan said, you know, putting them together, uh, in a, in a more contrarian, uh, type of construction. Yeah, I think so. Um, Debo, I mean, this guy, Devin, he's kind of morphed into this hybrid role and it's crazy. Cause you look at his game logs here and the last, you know, few games, he's been one single reception, but eight, six and eight in the carries department. And obviously the touchdown variance has been incredible for him here with uh, five in the last four games. He gets a tasty matchup here. Atlanta's bad. Highest team total we've got on the board. Um, Nobody's going to play Debo at that number, right? Like that's too too expensive, too expensive. I mean, he's not going to score touchdowns on what, like 20 percent of his carries, and it, he's not going to he's not getting the receptions even for a running back. Like if a running back was getting one reception, that's awful. So I, he's just too expensive. I tend to agree. I yeah. yeah what 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 happened? <laughs> like I've got I've got him in some. Give me Cordero Patterson at that point. Like I'd yeah. much rather a Patterson. Yeah, I would I would agree with that at much cheaper, right? Isn't he in the six Ks? I think yes, yeah, high sixes. I think um, Devin, give us some other wide receivers. Who else? You yeah, like? so uh, wide receivers are really going to depend on what happens this week. So in cash, if there's a four K wide receiver, the way I'm going is I'm going Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, Devontae Parker, and filling in the rest of my roster. I can do it by going with Tua Tagovailoa. Valoa. I get back to my premise of I want players who I can trust and I can trust Adams. I can trust Cooper cup. If there's not a 4k running back and it somewhere in the 4k, whether Craig Reynolds pops, if Jamal Williams is out or something like that, if there's not one of those guys, then I'm going down to, let's see who I'm going down to. I am going down to, it's tough. 
because Dan is going to like this play. Um, and I don't know that I love it. So I'm going to, I'm not going to digs. I'm going to Deontay Johnson, um, who has had 10 or more, 10 or more, uh, Phil, we're getting a lot of background noise, but uh, 10 or more carry or 10 or more targets in like six or seven straight games. So I think as a cash game play, I want targets. I want consistency. I want consistent points. Give me Tennessee's run defense is really good. Give me Deontay Johnson. In Am I the only guy that felt that you just gave that pick out of spite? Rather no, than I anything else like it really no, felt no, like no. oh I cannot talk about Dan Stefan Diggs. No, no, so let's before, butter up Deontay Johnson a little. No, before the show I had Deontay Johnson and I've been researching here in the back uh background. I thought I convinced myself on Stefan Diggs, but I'm going back trusting my gut. Um it's a very large gut. So I'm going I'm going Deontay Johnson. I hope that there's a 4K running back because I'd love to play Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams. Uh, Duke Johnson's just waiting there for you. Um, Gabriel Davis. Uh, it looks like Emmanuel Sanders is out. He's 3,700. He's kind of popping for us early as the kind of value chalk at this position. Um, and Devontae Parker as well, you know, with potentially not having – uh, Jalen Waddle there. Um, John, anybody else on your radar here that uh, think could be a little sneaky? Uh, in terms of sneakiness, uh, probably none of the guys you got, you have mentioned. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up, and I, I actually think that Devin's going to at least agree with this, uh, Cole Beasley this week at, at, at 4,900 against Carolina. I know I know he, he – uh, a little He's background. Fine. A little background information. He's I, probably going to test positive for COVID, but he's fine. <laughs> you're right about that. <laughs> um, the uh, if we're doing sneaky, uh, Rondell Moore this week, I like quite a bit, especially with that questionable backfield situation there in Arizona. Yeah. We've already talked about this team having the highest implied team total on the Vegas boards. He's 4,400. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is is done for the season, uh, and. Probably, I mean, I'm not looking at it, but I'm guessing that's probably 10 targets that need to be redistributed across this this uh, this Arizona Cardinals offense. And James Conner looks like he's unlikely to play. We're not really sure what's happening with uh, Chase Edmonds. And we already know that Rondell Moore, they, they line him up in a number of different scenarios. He becomes this gadget guy, very, very much like Visca down in Jacksonville, that I think is interesting at 4,400. Uh, he's got a lot of skill. He's quick. And he's fun to watch. So I'll, I'll have a bit of Rondell Moore this week. Um, and, and Devontae uh, Parker, uh, I know we brought him up, but I, but I want to underscore what a great play he is this week. Um, when I talked in the previous segment about <clears throat> James Robinson being one of my highest uh, roster players this week, uh, without question, my highest roster player this week is going to be Devontae Parker. Um I, I may end up with something like 60% in, in GPP. So um, he's the best player on the board, uh, full stop. Uh, real quick, Phil, before we move to tight ends, if you were going to stack a Jacksonville wide receiver with our boy Trevor Lawrence, who's who's your choice? That's a tough question uh, because I actually like them all a little bit. Um, so maybe that means that I'll be looking to double stack them and just go, you know, full oh my God. Pan, pants off Trevor Lawrence lineups. Uh, <laughs> and spend but, like 4K uh, under the cap because. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I mean, listen, I, the guy that I called out last week, Laquan Treadwell, continues to come through in a in a solid floor type of sense. Um, I, I do think that that he's running enough routes and he's involved enough in the offense that um, he, he could get it done again. And, and Marvin Jones actually projects pretty well uh, also. So I like both of those guys. Just um, real quick, some other names that I had jotted down for GPPs. Um, I think DJ Moore is going to go overlooked uh, because nobody wants a piece of the Cam Newton passing game on the road in Buffalo. Uh, but they are without Tredavious White uh, in their defensive backfield. Uh, Tom Brady, even though he's Tom Brady and not Cam Newton, uh, had no problem carving them up last week 
and DJ Moore in the three games since Newton took over, target shares of 26%, 32%, 29%, and leads the team in air yards. Um, I I think he'll finally not be popular this week, so I do want to play him. Uh, T. Higgins, what what does T. Higgins have to do to get on people's radars? It, It was really weird. Like, Everyone was playing him while he was putting up like six catch, 50 yard receiving games. And over the last three, since he's gone six for 114, nine for 138, and five for 114, nobody's playing him anymore. Um, I don't know. He's the hottest wide receiver in the league this side of Cup and Adams. Uh, and I wouldn't be shocked to see him go sub 10% in he's tournaments. A, he's a FanDuel chalk. FanDuel refuses to bring his price over 7K. It's an absolute disgrace to pricing. His price has gone up on DraftKings, though. I I, I liked him. I loved him. Back. You just said an absolute disgrace <laughs> to pricing in the most serious tone. It's ever. true. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get on to tight ends here, which is there not much here. Um, we'll see about Kittle. We got a questionable questionable tag. He did practice, so uh, maybe a good chance that he will play. And he's been. Just a target monster. 12 and 15 each of the last two weeks, but the salaries are all the way up to 7,500, but a good matchup there versus Atlanta. Um, John, um, there's plenty of guys in this middle tier, and I, I haven't looked yet, but Mike Gusecki, if all these guys are out, might be a really, really good play this week at 5K. Well, you just saw the uh, the yellow black eyed Joe. He he's the best play at this position this week for for cash games. He's the only guy I'm considering. Um, there are there are other guys who are in that neighborhood, but given what we've talked about already about Jalen Waddle being out and Miami being ten points uh, favorites over the Jets, it's it's Gasicki and it's really it's nobody else. I mean, if you want to go lower. Gerald Everett and Tyler Higby um, come out high on the model. Uh, but the, and those are guys that I, that I have marked as GPP plays because they're going to be less popular. Um, but those are, those are the guys I like. This isn't a, a position that you really want to get behind this week. As you've already noted, Dan, George Kittle is, is expensive. He's 7,500 um, on a week that, you know, they, they, we'll see what happens with uh, the Niners. There's some questions in the backfield there and, and he's, He's going to be extremely popular. Dallas Godert is going to be popular. Goddard, excuse me. It wouldn't be a show without me mispronouncing somebody's name. Goddard's going to be uh, popular as well. And I think he's a fade for tournaments. But, um, you know, there, there are a handful of guys tonight that I like. Um, and I've talked about them. Gasecki, Everett, Higby. And it wouldn't be a show without me mentioning uh, somebody Dan's already talked about. And that's James O'Shaughnessy. I thought for sure we were getting a John throwback with CJ Uzama. Nope, you didn't get him, and he's disappointing. Yep, Phil, um, you, you like Kittle at all this week? I mean, I, I mean, what do we take out of these last two weeks? I mean, that was just just crazy, crazy, crazy volume. Um, I mean, if he does that, seventy five hundred, we're happy to pay it. But were those outliers, or is this a direction that? we can expect San Francisco to continue. I don't think it was an outlier necessarily because George Kittle is like a, a Hall of Fame level talent at tight end. So these types of games are, are going to come. Uh, is it going to all be funneled his way at the expense of Debo Samuel long term? I I don't know. I mean, he can't sustain what he's been doing and he's equivalent in price to the wide receiver five. Um, so my gut reaction was he's too expensive, uh, especially with some of the other value that's on the board. Um, I do think from a tournament roster construction standpoint, paying up at tight end to anyone besides Kittle will probably get you to a different looking lineup than everyone else. And, um, you know, even though they're not the best point per dollar plays, Mark Andrews has a ceiling, Zach Ertz has a ceiling against Detroit, uh, wouldn't be the power grid if I didn't talk about Kyle Pitts, who has a theoretical ceiling, <laughs> at, at, at least. In what in what year? <laughs> um, 
But my my top play at the position though is Tyler. Well, it is Mike Gusecki, uh since the Jalen Waddle news. But before that, uh, it was Tyler Higby. Uh, again, presumably with Beckham sidelined, you you could see uh, a a spot where he's in the number two chair behind Cooper Cup. Um, he hasn't had much of a ceiling this year, but he's been steady. You know, he's he's involved in that offense. And uh, there is upside this week with the opponent being the Seahawks. Uh, they've allowed 76% more uh, PPR fantasy points to opposing tight ends than league average over the last five weeks. Uh, one of Kittle's huge games came against them. Uh, Zach Ertz put up two touchdowns and, and eight catches for 88 yards. Uh, last week, uh, a guy who was in my article, Cheap Plug, uh, what's it called? GPP domination on, uh, on football guys. Uh, Brevin Jordan appeared in that article. He went for seven targets, four catches, 26 yards and a touchdown. Uh, by the way, I think he could probably do that again against Jacksonville if you want to go dumpster diving. Um, but I, I think Higby's in a really good spot. You might as well play him with your Jacksonville double stack while you're at it, right? Let's just there you go. Run it back, baby. <laughs> uh, Devin, uh, final final thoughts on tight end? Yeah, the best play this week is Gerald Everett. We talked about the wide receivers in, in Seattle. I think a large number of these guys are not going to play. They have nothing to play for. I think it's going to be 3,500. Gerald Everett getting these short dump-off passes as Russell Wilson tries to move the ball down the field. I don't think he's going to be very chalky either. So, you know, good spot for you. Um, should be interesting to see uh, how this week plays out. Again, a lot of information we're still waiting on. Team defense. Uh, man, I mean, Detroit, they're so bad. Like, we should just play Arizona, right? I know it's 4K. Nobody likes to, to, to spend up. But Detroit is so bad. You take Hawkinson out of the mix, of course, now for the season give me arizona you can afford them this week uh yeah. there's going to be plenty of value uh i guess the question is i mean you're on some on some point you're you're right dan what DraftKings is doing right now i can't speak to to fanduel but DraftKings is is raising the floor uh in terms of their cheapest defenses so you know you've got you've got the ravens giants Jets at 2,500. It used to be 2K. Um, I miss the days of Draft Street where you get a defense for like $18. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the defense I like in cash this week um, are the Buffalo Bills against Carolina uh, at 3,100. I think you can make a, an argument for the Jags against Houston as well at 2,800. Um, both are pretty cheap if you don't have that extra $1,000 to get to the Cardinals. Um, for all the reasons you've already talked about. Yeah, so let's let's say the Jaguars are more motivated, more inspired. Is that going to help the offensive side of the ball or is it going to help the defensive? I tend to think it's going to help the defensive side of the ball more. They're studying film uh, more. This Jaguars I, defense is not that bad. Totally disagree. I think that – I think they're – that's why I don't think it – I think they're pretty good. Like, I think that there's, there's not that much room for that defense to get – Better. I mean, they only allowed. I, I think what, Trevor Lawrence is week. pretty bad. Well, at least there's a chance he could be good. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like we're 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 hoping it's going to happen. I, I, I mean, I think the D, I think the Jags D is a good play, but I just don't know that I agree with that take that there's much improvement off of this. I just don't know how much better you can get with Marvin Jones, Laquan Treadwell, and Lavisca Chanel. Like all Against three of these Houston, guys are. This they're is so it. bad. They're so bad. I know it's, they have no talent outside of James Robinson, who is a great running back. And I have no reason, no understanding why they drafted Travis Etienne, but that's a whole nother discussion. So I like the Jags as the chalk cash this week. Yeah. I, I think they will be chalky. I totally agree. Phil final thoughts. Uh, yeah, I have no understanding why I drafted Travis Etienne on like 25% of my best ball teams. Um, but defenses, defenses uh for tournaments i like the eagles they're coming off a bye week and they are playing the washington football team uh who was just completely dismissed by dallas last week uh on on that defense's way to a huge game um heineke is banged up Allen, i think is out so who knows what happens there 
Uh, and then every week in GPPs, I like the Bengals, uh, and I like them again this week against uh, Teddy Bridgewater and the Denver Broncos. All right, boys and girls, uh, that's going to do it for this edition here of the Power Grid. Grid. Great to be back with the guys again. We'll do it next Thursday night. Everybody stay safe out there. Uh, obviously, you know, COVID's going around all over the place, and it's going to affect people's lives, going to affect – uh, obviously, fantasy football this weekend, so stay on top of the news. Sunday morning, those inactives, more important than they've probably been in the history of DFS um, over you know the last 10 years. So stay up on top of the news. That's going to help you. But we always appreciate you guys tuning us in. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube, a review on iTunes. Until next week, for Devin and John and Phil, I'm Dan. We'll talk to you then.